Greetings, welcome back to Black Bear News, where we are discussing the ongoing effects, uh, the escalation, escalating effects of climate change, abrupt climate change, um, extreme weather, et cetera, et cetera. And um, it's been a very long day for me. I was up at five this morning after barely sleeping last night and worked all day, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I, there's just so much happening. <laughs> there's just so much to cover, um, that I had to, um, get out here and do, I wanted to do a couple videos tonight because there's just too much going on. Uh, the other thing that's really frustrating for me is that every time I do a video, there's, you know, a ton of really funny or insightful or thoughtful comments and I can't respond or even see all of them. Like I just spent a half hour like scrolling through the comments for the last few videos and a bunch of really good comments that I missed. I'm sorry y'all if I had um, a couple more hours in my day, I could spend more time interacting in the comment section or at least seeing all the great comments that are there. Uh, what I did want to do we start with a comment that Val left, Valhalla56 left the other day. Um, and it kind of stayed, the reason why I'm starting this video off is this comment kind of stayed with me um, because it's very true. Uh, he says, I hate to start this off on a negative start, but I have to disagree with you, Red, that we are all rich here just because we live in the USA. A lot of us are on a rat race trying to keep the wolf from the door to be foreclosed on or uh, repoed one step away from living on the street. I would rather live in a poorer country where the people are mostly at the same financial level than being in the constant state of stress many of us feel in this country. Everything from the traffic jams, mass murders, political stress, financial hardships, student loans, medical bills, all the insurance rackets that I just have to deal with there is so much stress in this country that I wonder how I escaped a heart attack so far. And a lot of people responded to that comment. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people are feeling the same feelings. I am feeling the same feelings. I am absolutely on a um, <clears throat> kind of an insane, extreme hamster wheel of uh, debt and work and bills and uh, kids and, you know, um, trying to juggle, you know, a couple of things, a couple of careers, uh, one as a video host and the other as a musician and the other as a, you know, um, a day, day gig worker. And, um, you know, that's just what it is. That's just what my life is at the moment, but it is, uh, nonstop wall to wall action every single day. And I'm running on very little sleep most of the time. And, uh, yes, it can be debilitating. Uh, it can affect your health and it can affect your mental health. Um, so, you know, a lot of us are in that same boat and you will hear many pundits, um, especially alternative pundits and, you know, people like Noam Chomsky and Chris Hedges and uh, Abby Martin and Jimmy Dore and those kind of people. They talk about the fact that, uh, you know, a good percentage of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, a good Amer uh I just heard the other day uh, that something like 50% of Americans only, uh, make $30,000 or less. $30,000 is nothing right now. Um, $30,000 is near poverty at this point uh, in the game. So, um, and $15 an hour ain't a living wage. It's a minimum wage for some, but it's not a living wage. Um, so speaking of, well, Speaking of uh, minimum wages, I'm going to link this video. It's a Jimmy Dore video, and it's about Amazon workers on strike in Italy, Spain, Germany, and the UK. And another interesting uh, fact from this video is uh, I believe all of Amazon's uh, fulfillment centers are unionized all of them but three, and those three are in the United States. 
So um, we, are, we are lacking in so many ways and we are lacking in so many ways that other first world countries, first world countries uh, are not. We don't have free healthcare, we don't have free education and, and our unions are quickly um, uh, going away and uh, we are struggling for just some basic, uh, basic needs and basic human rights that other countries enjoy and we are supposedly the most advanced uh, or mo most rich or most powerful country in the world and I beg to differ. Um, however, we are far richer than, than many. Um, so anyways, good comment by Val. Thank you, Val, always. Uh, actually, Val is one of the, the hardcore, um, I don't know if I'd call them a group of 10 or a group of 20, but there's, you know, there's a hardcore core group of people that are on every video and that comment um, have really insightful things to say. And I, I really am um, glad you guys are all here. And I, I very thankful and blessed to have such great followers. Uh, so another thing that Val uh, posted, and I, I'm going to I'm going to post this on this video as well. I guess there's a new new service that delivers gas to your car, so you don't have to go to the gas station. Um, I guess another high tech or you know app based service like you can just order groceries from the store now. You don't have to go to the store anymore. You don't have to go to the gas station anymore. Uh, you don't have to go to the store anymore. Uh, you can order everything from you know um, this gas company called Booster. Uh, you can order groceries from your local store, and you can order anything else that you might need from Amazon. Um, you know, at this point, I think uh, if if you are a person that is worried about people being treated fairly and you're boycotting boycotting Walmart, you should absolutely be boycotting Amazon. Amazon is the devil. Um, after watching this Jimmy Dore video, um, I knew they were bad and we've known they were bad, but they're just terrible. Not only that, they have a CIA contract, um, <clears throat> like a cloud uh, cloud contract with the CIA. They also own the Washington Post and it's just, they're starting, they are the tentacles that are quickly enveloping everything. Um, and on top of that, they just don't pe pay people enough to live on, even though uh, they were shamed into raising their minimum wage to $15 an hour. And after they did that, they started laying people off. So uh, Amazon, not so nice. Uh, I would say boycott Amazon if you, if you can, if you are up to it. Moving on um, to some climate change news. There is a lot. I'm not gonna be able to cover it all today, but um, I'm gonna do my very best. So uh, Australia experiencing heat waves um, as they get into their summer. Heat waves have been smashed across the state. Um, the, the, the title of this article is Queensland Heat Record Smashed. This is from today. Uh, heat records have been smashed across the state with Prosperin in Queensland's Whitsunday region hitting 44.9 degrees on Monday. And uh, let's see, I always like to do my uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion because I have no idea what 45 is. It's 113 degrees, ooh. Ouch, uh, that's, that's a blister right there. Uh, Bureau of Meteorology forecaster Lachlan Stoney said Prosperin had exceeded its all-time record, which was in December 1995, when the town reached 42.9 degrees. Mackay also reached, or Mackay, I don't know how you pronounce it in uh, Aust Australian, Mackay also reached a record high on Monday, recording uh, 40 degrees, which is 1.5 degrees above the 1995 record, while Mariba exceeded, uh, uh, exceeded the 2000 November record by 0.5 degrees when it reached 39.5 degrees. So yeah, I'm gonna link this below. I'm not gonna read any more of it, but uh, heat waves upon heat waves in Australia, they're getting roasted. <clears throat> and, What else is going on? 
Well, let's go back to some political news since this video seems to be uh, kind of veering towards the state of the state of the economy, working class, et cetera, et cetera. Um, GM to slash jobs and production drawing Trump's ire. So everybody's heard about this GM. So it's closing a bunch of plants. We'll cut production of slow selling models and slash its, slash its North American workforce because of a declining market for traditional gas powered sedans, shifting more investment to electric and autonomous vehicles. Um, maybe that's a good thing, but laying a bunch of people off, not so good. GM's actions add up to the biggest restructuring for the U.S. Number one car maker since his bankruptcy a decade ago and mark a turning point for the North American auto industry. U.S. automakers have enjoyed nearly a decade of prosperity since 2008, 2009, when they were um, bailed out and pumped up by the Obama administration, or the Bush slash Obama administration's uh, government bailouts, et cetera, et cetera. So GM um, engaged in a buyback recently, a stock buyback. They actually made quite a bit of money, uh, something like $6 billion. in the last year so <laughs> there you go just a little bit of restructuring sorry guys um merry christmas uh moving on let's check this article let's get into some some meatiness uh this is an article from clean technica Peak oil and drastic oil shortages imminent, says IEA. This is from November 22nd. While the IEA got a lot of coverage for its world energy outlook in 2018, there might be a little snippet that got way underappreciated. On page 159 of its outlook, accessible only behind a payment barrier, the following graph can be found. And it's basically um, oil production going down after... 2019 a steep decline it is clear to see that peak oil will be hit well before 2020 while demand keeps on rising unless the world's oil majors and state-owned oil companies would massively invest in new exploration according to the iea however the oil majors did already heavily spend on new oil expor exploration in the in the years after 2000 where fossil fuel hype thank you, George Bush, with an accompanying coal boom led up to an oil price of over $150. Thank you again, George Bush, in 2008. While this oil price proved unsustainable for a crashing world economy, again, thank you, George W. Bush, this oil explore, exploration boom led to very little new findings in the big scheme of things. So what does that mean? It means that a collapse of oil supply to half of its current size within only six years Holy, uh, holy crikey, uh, or whatever, holy shnikes, as uh, Chris Farley used to say. Um, with only six years supply, uh, simply cannot be compensated by new oil findings and certainly not by unconventional oil sources like oil sands and fracking. That the oil majors did not pick up with new oil exploration after the oil price rose again to $100 per barrel in the years after 2008 is another sign that the world is already overexplored, as geologists put it. Instead, the oil majors concentrated on the stock buyback, <laughs> knowing full well that further exploration would be a waste of money while they are sitting on oil that will become very valuable, even though the amount of oil they will extract will decline significantly. Ooh. I'm hearing um, the bells a-tolling. In summary, the oil majors and state-owned oil companies in this field, notably the initial public offering of Saudi Aramco, the world's biggest oil company has been scrubbed, are waiting for an oil price bonanza to happen while the IEA is very concerned about future oil supply. While the IEA has no credibility left when it comes to renewables, see following graph, because its forecasts historically have been absurdly wrong. The IEA should possess some knowledge in the oil business and especially concerning the decline rates of existing conventional fields which have been studied in depth for decades. Notably, the peak oil graph from the IEA has been unearthed by the Association of Study of Peak Oil and Gas, the ASPO, which has an organization 
as an organization has itself published multiple studies on peak oil while ASPO has put peak oil sooner, sooner than the IEA. <laughs> so when is that right now, today? I mean, how, how much sooner than 2019 can you get? And its latest study, already at, two, at 2011 for conventional crude. It is remarkable that the IEA, so they, they're saying it was 2011. Okay, it is remarkable that the IEA refuted this claim back then with the statement that peak oil would not be reached before 2020, while it surely looks like they corrected that statement for themselves now. What does that mean for the world economy and investors in oil? Surely, there could be handsome profit to be made by riding the coming oil shortages, but one has to keep in mind that while the oil price might go through the roof, the barrels that can be sold also shrink fast and drastically. So there remains the question of how high the profits of the oil majors will rise and how much will this be appreciated by the stock price for these clearly dying companies. Furthermore, these rapid stock swings um, with these rapid stock swings, you compete with banking supercomputers that act in a millisecond time frame. So you would have to be alert night and day for the point when the crash will come because the world economy not being able to take the oil price anymore. As a conservative long-term investor, this can only mean to get out of these stocks as soon as possible while risk-loving investors can try to take a quick buck on the coming stock volatility. With the world economy crashing a couple of times due to ongoing undersupply and oil. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, that's really bad. Well, the last time the, the economy crashed and uh, Michael Rupert, Rupert correctly um, put the blame squarely on the, on the high oil prices, um, sustained high oil prices in 2007, over 2007 and into 2008. Um, it was at like four and, and plus um, nationwide. And people could just not take it. Um, obviously, there's you know rioting going on in France over the same situation. Um, we are enjoying fairly cheap gas. Can you guys keep it down? We're enjoying cheap gas in the United States right now. But um, if we saw another rise up to like the four, you know, four dollar level sustained, you know, four to five dollars. Uh, people all the people that are making thirty thousand dollars or less a year all the people that are living paycheck to paycheck all the people who are massively in debt all those people are going to be wiped out anyways that's all i have for this video thank you so much for your eyes your ears and your conscience if you would like to support this channel you can do so at the links below um coming back at you with another video until then peace